Welcome everyone to ChessLecture.com. My name is International Master William Pascal, and today I've got a standalone video for you featuring a very interesting game. I've entitled this Human vs. 2700. The following game is a matchup where the difference in ratings is close to 400 points. Playing white is International Master Gary Quillen from England. And playing black is rising star Grandmaster Daniel Dubov from Russia, one of the top, I believe, two or three strongest young players in the world who are rapidly approaching the top stage. Daniel Dubov playing black, and Quillen is white. Dubov rated over 2,700, Quillen around 2,350. This is a very interesting game. Now, psychologically, We'll go through the first few moves here. But psychologically, I think that it's absolutely key for the lower rated player to believe in themselves and absolutely have the confidence that they can beat anyone that they face over the board. Recently, I saw someone express the opinion that it's very important to have a lot of respect for your opponent. I think that this may be true to some extent, but it is more important that you have confidence in yourself. That's the single most important thing. And I think it's definitely better to have more confidence or too much confidence than, than to be lacking in self-confidence. Because if you don't believe in yourself, there's absolutely no way that you're going to beat a strong player. So Quillen here is a player who is under, under 2400, facing a 2700 player. He plays e4, g6, d4, Bishop g7, and now f4. This is interesting. There's just a small side story that was um, revealed in the interview with Gary after the game. He said that he prepared to play bishop e3 in this game, but decided at the board at the very last moment to play this like lesser known f4 move because he was afraid that maybe Dubov had prepared despite the fact that White is a relatively amateur player um, compared to Dubov. You know, he suspected Dubov as a professional would prepare. And so maybe wisely second-guessing himself and playing f4. Now, this is a very aggressive move. We're actually playing probably the most aggressive setup you could possibly play against the modern defense. I once did this myself with White um, against a very, very strong international master Igor Feugel and he played c5 I think that c5 is an extremely good response for black going more into a, a Benoni type of thing after c5 for example d5 d6 c4 e6 knight c3 I think that black has a favorable kind of four pawns attack because he's not committing to putting the knight on f6 four pawns attack kings indian or four pawns Benoni Black by not committing to put the knight on f6, um, I think this is actually quite a, a good system for black, and I'm not sure that the four pawns attack is really that good if the knight isn't on f6 early. So c5, in my opinion, would be black's recommended approach in this position for Dubov. Another good approach is actually d5, and oftentimes... Playing e5 leads to Gurga needs a Karo Khan type of positions, whereas taking on d5 leads to a Scandinavian where the pawn is on f4 and, and somewhat misplaced. So I think either c5 or d5 are probably black's best options against this rare move played by, by Quillen here. Um, but instead, Dubov just plays d6. And with this system, I mean, white is given the option to transpose to... A normal Austrian attack against the, the Pirts or a normal kind of line in the modern where you play f4. So I don't think that black is really trying to punish white's move but rather transpose to a system perhaps he has more experience with. Um, but Quillen here plays knight f3. This move leads to a slightly unusual position and instead knight c3 would go into massive theory in the modern or Pirts. Again, F4 systems in both those openings, which are obviously interrelated, are considered some of the most aggressive lines, and Dubov would be very knowledgeable about how to play. So, White here taking Dubov out of the main lines, maybe not a bad idea. 
black plays now bishop g4 in the spirit of the Gurganidza Karo Khan. And then white just simply c3, securing the pawn at d4. So black tries to put pressure on d4, but the c3 pawn just anchors it here. I don't know what the best setup is. Perhaps black could try something like c5, but in that instance, white can perhaps just take on c5. I think that I've seen some games where black sacrifices a pawn. David Norwood, English Grandmaster, I've seen sacrifice a pawn in this way. Um, but I'm not sure that you want to do that with the with the bishop on g4. Perhaps in a different position, we could play instead c5 right away in this type of position, sacrificing a pawn for black. But after bishop g4, c3, Dubov just plays a little bit routinely here, knight d7. And I think the modern defense is very popular for strong players when they're playing against lower rated players. It gives the lower rated players a very good chance to overextend themselves and I think that for that reason 1g6 is is always very popular for the higher rated players to try to beat weaker players so knight to d7 um, bishop c4 this this position is not really a theoretical one bishop c4 is possibly not white's best move he is threatening a very primitive tactic on f7 but it seems like the bishop on c4 will likely be hit with tempo at some point by an advancing pawn or a knight on b6. Interesting move here for black could be the idea of playing knight h6. Experimental, and it's, it's possible that the knight doesn't play well from h6. It doesn't get into the game from there. So Duba plays more naturally e6, just blocking the bishop on c4, making that piece kind of blocked out. I think this is a pretty standard type of structure. I think white is slightly better. Now castles and knight to e7, queen e1. With queen e1, white breaks the pin and he has grand pre-attack Sicilian type of attacking plans. This is a relatively standard motif. And the queen on e1 also plays well on the e-file black in this position, unable to play, for example, d5, attacking the bishop on b3. So Dubov has less space, and I think that white's advantage is, um, is without doubt, although a small one, it's very lasting. The space advantage is, is not easy to, to negate here. So aggressive play so far. White not wasting time with unnecessary moves like h3. I like queen e1. A lot of weak players would have played h3 here reflexively. But after h3, bishop takes f3, queen takes f3. We no longer have rook lifts, for example, coming to h3. And black could very well um, counter with d5 in the center at some point on that bishop on, on c4. I think that white is slightly better here, but it's not nearly as good as queen to e1. Queen e1 not allowing any weaknesses. Castles for black. And now bishop b3. This is a very smart prophylactic move. White plays this entire game arguably without making a mistake, which is extremely difficult to do in, uh, in a game that goes more than 20 moves. But um, black played, I think, normally for the most part. Bishop to b3, bishop takes f3. White saved a lot of time without having to waste a tempo on h3. And at this point, Black has to consider that if the knight were to move, how would he salvage his bishop? His bishop could get trapped on g4. So at this point, you have to begin to think about the possibility of white playing something like knight h4 or knight d2, followed by the threat of trapping the bishop on g4. So Dubov here doesn't take any risks. He plays bishop takes f3, and then rook takes f3. White has a stronger center. And there are some attacking chances on the king side with a very caveman-like approach. Rook h3, queen h4, and again, straight out of the Grand Prix attack Sicilian. Interesting question if this player, because I'm not sure if the international master playing white in this game is familiar with the Grand Prix attack, popular with English masters, that particular opening, very similar in style to this. But... 
black now played c5 and i think this is a good way for black to get counterplay he's putting pressure on d4 and he'd like white to either push the d-pawn or take on c5 but quillen plays perfectly here um, bishop e3 in my experience most weaker players have a hard time playing positions like this where they have space then they have to consolidate it very accurately but white is not an absolute amateur he's an international master who's been as high as 2400 fide and he has the skills to understand how to consolidate a space advantage white basically has to secure his space advantage and then slowly begin to encroach on the opponent's position but that takes a fairly subtle understanding uh, here Dubov exchanges on d4 right away maybe he could consider in some way delaying this exchange because when you do this, c takes d, c takes d, this knight on b1, now this is happening a lot, for example, in the French defense, or the c3 Sicilian, the knight on b1 can now develop on its first square to an extremely strong position on c3, where it influences two central squares. It also somewhat negates black's counterplay along the open c file. So black could think about delaying that exchange on d4. Now he played knight f6. This move looks a little suspect because black is not developing his other pieces, not really establishing a center. Perhaps instead black could play something like d5. d5, e5, knight f5, and bishop f2, followed by h5, a setup that would be reminiscent of the Gurganidze Karakan. White has more space but it's still very tough to crack black's position i think this would be a credible way for black to continue but instead dubov here wants to keep it more fluid so he tries something kind of speculative playing knight f6 attacking the e4 pawn white defends with knight to c3 and now dubov plays knight to g4 and the truth of this position is probably that black is okay if he's careful here but he falls into a very kind of classic trap which is underestimating your opponent i think difficult to say but one gets the feeling that he he underestimated white a little bit so after knight to g4 white cannot move the bishop off the diagonal he has to allow the e3 bishop to be exchanged he brings his last piece in the game everything that quillan does in this game is extremely fundamental this is an absolutely instructive game. Rook d1 over protecting this d4 pawn. And now queen b6. And this turns out to be, although a very natural move, it turns out to be a serious mistake for black. So here Dubov is obviously playing for a win against a low-rated player. He doesn't want to simplify the position too much, but I think the truth is that he has to take on e3 in this position eliminating white's bishop pair and eliminating a very very dangerous piece the dark squared bishop and after this i think that black is slightly slightly worse because he has less space but white still has a liability in this pawn on d4 so i don't think it would be that easy and if you want to equalize you want to eliminate the opponent's attacking pieces i think simplifying here gives black a very good chance to hold this game and and probably equalize but black was more optimistic he played queen b6 and he misses a very strong resource here knight a4 and this is simply brilliant i mean this isn't just attacking the queen for the sake of attacking the queen he buys time and takes pressure off of d4 and when he does that watch this knight a4 queen a6 probably best move dubov didn't play badly bishop c1 this is one of the best moves in the game by quillen He's not just playing routine moves. Bishop c1 is absolutely pivotal. He retains that bishop as an attacking piece, and the rook that would have been shut out on a1 has now transferred over to d1. And I'm teaching this to my students all the time. Pieces don't have to be developed for the sake of developing them. The bishop is somewhat developed on c1. The biggest problem with the bishop on c1 was that it was blocking the rook on a1, and Quillen actually found a way to develop the rook to d1 and activate all of his pieces 
while the bishop just retreats back to c1, secures everything. It's really nice. Now the knight on g4 is just basically hanging out to dry, and Dubov doesn't really know what to do here. So we have b5, grabbing some space on the queen side, but driving the knight back to a good square. Knight c3, and now queen b6, pressurizing d4. And this is perhaps a natural miscalculation. Dubov assumes that he's got two pieces attacking d4, white will defend it. You know, most people probably would have defended it. But Quillen realized something here, that the knights on e7 and, and g4 are both hanging. So instead of making a bad move and defending d4, he simply plays queen h4 with gain of time. This is brilliant, because if bishop takes d4 check, it's possible to just play king h1. And you'd say, oh, well, what about knight check? It's no problem, because rook takes f2, bishop takes f2, queen takes e7, and we win two very, very strong minor pieces for a rook. This is an extremely strong attacking position for white, because you have five pieces for white that are really actively developed compared to one or two for black. So although in this position black has um, a pawn and a rook, the two minor pieces are massively superior for white. Although this probably would have been better than what happened in the game. Dubov instead retreats with knight f6, but white had to absolutely play this perfectly in order to convert. The following move, g4. g4 on the surface, it looks like a, a bad move, it looks weakening, it looks like a, a beginner's kind of attacking plan, but it turns out to be the best move, because he has to act here in a very, very timely fashion for this to work. And g4 is just astounding. You're threatening to play attacking plans with g5, with f5. The position is extremely dangerous for black. Rook h3 is an idea. Now black played queen b7, attacking the pawn on e4, and white with rook h3, tying down the black knight to the pawn on h7. This is the key idea. And Dubov didn't just play queen b7 to attack the pawn on e4, by the way. He's also, and this is a very key point, he's also defending his knight on e7 laterally with the queen from b7. I think that queen b7 was probably black's best defense. Now rook h3, and it becomes amazingly difficult for black to do anything here, because our attack is coming very quickly with white. Black plays h5, and now not g5, which would close the lines, but g takes h5, opening the lines, and you see all of white's pieces, every single piece is in the game, which is just extremely fundamental and, and very instructive. The key really being getting the rook to d1, getting the rook across, and that rook actually wins the game for white. The attack, every single piece plays here. Very, very strong. Knight takes h5, and now f5. This is kind of reminiscent, I would say, of like how maybe Steinitz would have played such a position. I would guess that this particular master um, has a good handle on kind of like classical games. It really looks like he he understands um, the way the great masters from from the past would have played. I mean, Steinitz active with the pieces, not afraid to extend the pawns, and looking for key breaks like f5. This is a big problem. I don't think that black can hold this position, actually. It looks like white's just too strong here. So f5 breaking it up, e takes f5, e takes f5. It looks like the white king is just wide open here. And most people would have probably made a mistake and gone astray. But white does not in this game. After e takes f5, knight takes f5, black goes up a pawn, and the white king looking wide open. But it's just too strong. The main point is the bishop on b3. Bishop on b3 now opened up by the f5 sacrifice. Another idea that's really straight out of the Grand Prix attack. So I'm thinking the white must be a Grand Prix attack player aficionado. Um, e takes f5, knight takes f5. That means that g6 is on prees, basically, when attacked, because you cannot recapture 
a queen or a piece on g6 because the f7 pawn is pinned. So at this position, I would have thought about playing queen g4 to keep d4 protected, but Quillen plays an even more accurate move, queen to g5 at this point, threatening f5, threatening h5, threatening g6. And he's not concerned about d4 because that rook protects d4. If we try to capture at d4, something like bishop takes d4, check, rook takes d4, knight takes d4, queen takes g6, check, is going to end in mate. Next move. So there just is no time for black to grab on d4. Dubov has to go back passively, because in this position white is threatening rook takes h5, as well as queen takes g6. Dubov retreats with knight e7, rook takes h5, and this is very easy to overlook. The most amazing part of this game is here, because this sacrifice is not easy to anticipate. We can see rook takes h5 fine, but what's not easy to see is the follow-up. What is white going to do next? After rook takes h5, g takes h5, there are basically three strong moves for white in this position. But at this point, Quillen chooses the best one. The chess engine that I analyzed the game with, it suggested, I believe, rook e1 as a good move. And that move is strong, but not as strong as the game continuation. Another idea is rook d3 with lateral threats of rook g3. But rook d3 suffers the fate of h4. And you can prevent the rook from transferring. White would have to take time to take the pawn on h4, which would be very costly in terms of tempi. So an amazing move now. He did this exchange sacrifice on h5 against the player 300 points higher, and then follows up with a super subtle rook d2. Absolutely best move. When I put this into a chess engine, it had no clue it was the best move, and then when I put it in, it said, oh yeah, that's the best move. This, this is a human finding this move. This is stronger than the engine suggestions. Rook d2, like kind of intuitive move, but going right for rook g2, absolutely the strongest move in this position. There is no defense for black after rook d2, rook g2. And he had to anticipate all of this when he played f5, really. The whole plan of queen g5 followed by sacking the exchange, rook d2, rook g2, it just works and there is no refutation. Black is lost here. An amazing game. And rarely do we see a player of this level uh, under under 2400 capable of playing um, on, on so accurately um, against a strong grandmaster like Dubov. But I can't really criticize Dubov too much. White played a brilliant game. d5 now trying to blunt the bishop on b3, but this has no effect. This is just simply desperation. He just takes the pawn on d5, knight takes d5, and now there's another threat with the knight coming to f6 check, delivering mate. So Dubov doesn't have a lot of choices here. He plays rook e8, giving the king a square at f8. If knight f6 check, you can play knight, like the king to f8 at this point, but Quillen just simply plays rook g2, which was the original plan. And now, there's nothing for black. Perhaps the best defense is knight f5, just simply losing a knight to prevent mate. And in that case, we don't have a direct mate. We can play something like just queen takes f5 and be up a massive amount of material with devastating threats to follow. But instead, Dubov here played knight g6, allowing knight f6 check. Now, if you move the king to h8, it's simply going to be mate. King h8, queen takes h5 check, mate on the next move. He played instead king f8. If bishop takes f6, also a very, very ugly situation here. Queen takes g6 check. And this is going to be fatal for black because there is no bishop g7. King f8, for example, bishop h6 check, king e7, and queen takes f7. Even if there is no mate, black would at the minimum lose the queen on b7. So going back, knight f6 check, king f8 basically only move, and then knight h7 check, putting the king back in the corner. Very beautiful finish. King g8, and now queen takes g6. 
and it's just an absolutely perfect coordination of the white pieces every single piece in the game this is a masterpiece that could be used to teach um, anyone fundamental attacking play this is absolutely perfect use of all the pieces according to fundamentals the only tricky part was the fact that white's king was relatively open so he had to be very careful about counter threats from black along the way bishop takes d4 and such but he was able to negate any of that and now the attack is just winning black resigns there is no way to stop mate other than playing rookie one check and the best defense is something like king f2 queen takes g2 check obviously losing all of his pieces to prevent mate so this is something a computer would do but in the position black just simply resigned after queen takes g6 31 moves 2340 international master just wiping out a 2700 player and i think this was one of the most flawless attacks that i've ever seen literally i'm not sure that white made really a significant inaccuracy in playing this entire attack so congratulations to gary quillen an excellent first round victory at gibraltar in the masters tournament there 2018 I'm International Master William Pascal for ChessLecture.com. This was Human versus 2700. Bye bye.